Okay, as promised, we are going to continue um, with our discussion of some of these combinatorial issues. Uh, combinations. So last time we looked at permutations and we derived the formula that um, NPR is N factorial over N minus R factorial. And hopefully we were satisfied with that. And now we want to talk about combinations. So this is where the order doesn't matter and we're just looking for uh, distinct permutations. So again, we'll consider this like simple example of a, a musical realm in which there are only four notes to choose from. Um, and we're going to look at um, combinations of one, two, and three notes from these four. Okay, so I figured a sensible thing to do would be to just sort of like start out with our permutations um, and then sort of whittle them down. Now in the case where, where we're talking about only one, one object that we're choosing from the four, I mean this is the same as for the, the permutations. You can either you can choose C or D or E or F. Those are all distinct, and since they're just single elements, there's no chance for uh, to see any duplicates. And so we would say that uh, four choose one is just going to be four. Now we do want to note that there's a we can write four choose one in terms of uh, permutations. Uh, we recall from our last video that four p one is four, and so we could just say that we're taking the permutations and we're dividing by one. Of course, this all seems kind of silly and inconsequential, but it will all make sense momentarily. Okay, suppose we're going to select two notes. So we're gonna form a little dyad or a little two note chord from our, from our four notes. So what are the possible ways that you can do this? Okay, well, we, we write down our permutations and we note that as soon as you write down C, D, this implies D, C. They're the, same, they're the same thing. So what I've done is I've taken my list here, and as soon as I considered, and that's my little notation for consider this permutation, I just put a line next to it, um, consider this permutation, like what does that also account for? What can we uh, like get rid of? Um, and of course, we can get rid of D, C after that. Is there anything else that's implied? Well, C, D, D, C, those would be the only two permutations that, that would be corresponding. So we move on, we consider C and E. Well, now we have to go find E and C and get rid of that, okay? C and F means we have to get rid of F and C. D and E means we'd have to get rid of E and D, done. D and F, we'd have to go get rid of F and D. E and F, we'd have to get rid of F and E. So, from our 12 permutations, we've whittled it down to six distinct combinations. Okay, and we can note that in terms of permutations, we've just got uh, the number of permutations, in this case, divided by two. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna like <laughs> ruin the, the big surprise, but we're gonna see that there's a connection between the number in our combinations and the denominator here, what we end up dividing the permutations by. And this will all be super abundantly clear after we look at the example of drawing on three items from our, our set of four total items. So look, we write down C, D, E, okay. Now we have like considerably more stuff we have to go get rid of. And I've tried to color coat this to keep track of it. So C, D, E, that means we'd have to get rid of C, E, and D. Okay, but we'd also have to go find D, C, E, and D, E, C and get rid of those. And we'd also have to find E, C, D, and E, D, C and get rid of those. And then, oh wait, see there's nothing in the, in the F area because or in the permutations that have F in them because that's not in our original permutation that we wrote down. But so we see we wrote down one thing and we realized that there were one, two, three, four, five, six different um, permutations that are sort of all corresponding. So like we wrote one thing and we see that there's like 
six times there's there's like a factor of like six of it in our permutation count. So let's see that again for for CDF. We would go hunt down this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, sorry, that wasn't one of them. Six guys that are sort of part of the same, like, cluster that exists as a consequence of writing down this permutation. So we write down one, we get six. And so the story goes with each one of these. And so when we go through and tally up how many distinct permutations there were, um, we get what we were what we're after, which is that 4 choose 3 is just equal to 4. And we also note that that's equal to 4p3 divided by 6. So what's, what's the pattern here? Um, okay, so every time we write down a permutation, and this is what we've just shown, we create a number of redundancies and the number of redundancies is a function of how many things we've selected, how many notes we've selected. So it was only, um, you know, we had these like, we sort of doubled up our, our figure when we used two, but we inflated, or sorry, we deflated our permutations by a factor of six when we moved to choosing three. So, as you may have guessed, we can express this using factorials. So, so in this in this case, we had we had uh, three things we we're choosing from: three factorials, three times two is six, and that gives us the answer for what's in our denominator. So it's easier to say this than to really explain why or to see it, but it's it's actually it's actually not that bad. Uh, you write down a permutation, and as, as we can see, since there are three different items in this list, it, that implies that you could have the first item be any of the three, the second item, then any of the two remaining, the third item then has to be the last thing remaining. So just writing down a permutation sort of suggests a total of R factorial permutations that are all uh, sort of different manifestations of the same essential combination. Okay, so you can think about uh, combinations as sort of a pared down uh, permutation. Or, okay, the, the number of possible combinations is going to be some fraction of the total number of permutations. And what that fraction of the permutations is going to be uh, is going to depend on how many different redundancies you generate when you write down a single permutation. And that is going to correspond to R factorial redundancies. So we're really looking for the proportion of permutations that are distinct, which we can get by taking the total number of permutations and dividing it by R factorial, which uh, gives us our take-home formula right here. Okay, thank you all very much for joining me. Hopefully this wasn't horribly confusing. Have a good day.